finally, things are looking up for my car. This was the site moments ago of the completion of putting my diff back together. Here it is, officially, with axles installed correctly on both sides. Oh, man. Oh, man, look at this. Oh, boy. So, you may notice that I missed a step or two, and uh, from last time, I didn't exactly explain what happened with all of this differential and axle stub goodness. Unfortunately, I didn't actually get video of all of the steps that I took to get it fixed. I'm actually gonna go ahead and make sort of a slideshow on this video and talk to you right now from the future about what was going on and what ended up happening. What you're looking at right now is a picture of a very awesome guy named Kenji. I guess he's the go-to guy at the North American headquarters of Cusco in Huntington Beach. I happened to be really lucky and at the time that I needed to do this I was living nearby and I drove there and had him take a look at my differential after I had removed it from the car. And you can see in this shot he's already taking it apart. Of course as taking it apart he did inspect all of the plates and said that everything in there looked like it was in pretty healthy condition. We eventually got to these two gears right here. And what you'll notice, these, these two gears go on the sides of the differential. What you can see in this picture here is a stack of plates. These plates are what locks up when your axles are going uh, different speeds and it's supposed to lock together uh, under, under power or under decel, depending on how you have it set up. These plates are what locks up and makes your rear axle act together instead of slipping and moving separately. And what you can see in the background there is a set of four gears lying on the table with a gear on top of them. Now the gear on top of them is the real thing that we're talking about here. Those are the side gears that have splines in them for the axles to go into. In this next picture you can see one of the side gears sitting on the side of the table with these four gears that are set together. Those four are really what make the differential a differential. Those are the ones that allow rotation of the axles separately. And in this picture, what you see is the two side gears. Both of these are splined on the inside, and these are what your axles go into. There's one on either side, and they're very similar. I know it's hard to explain because I can't show you physically what the problem was, but these two gears have been put in backwards. Essentially, one of them has to go on the right side, one of them has to go on the left side, and they had been swapped. By doing that, this differential was not set up to match with any stock axles that you can imagine. None of them were going to fit in this thing. If you look at the axles, they have C-clips that have to be in certain spots, and there's no way that they'll line up with the side gears when they're switched. So, even though the splines are the same on both axles, the clips are different. Even looking at the two, you can see that they're very similar, and that's why I'm sure whoever took it apart must have not really known what they were doing. They took the thing apart and put it together and made a mistake. And that is what the problem was. And there's no way that I could have ever known without taking it apart. And I was really apprehensive of taking it apart. I didn't really want to do it myself. Unfortunately, aftermarket parts just don't have the same research and development that a full original manufactured car has. They don't have nearly the same budget for engineering and they are trying to achieve something that the rest of the car was never intended to achieve. And so you're always getting into a gray area of unknowns and you really don't know when you put in an aftermarket part if it's gonna even work, if it's gonna fit, if it's gonna improve the car or maybe make it worse in some ways. So this is just one of the examples of that. At this point in the video, I had already gone through this, had the diff rebuilt and properly assembled and reinstalled in the housing. And my original axles that I had taken out of the car in the first place actually fit properly with this carrier. So the axle stubs are in the differential and I'm just putting everything back together. So in the meantime, I had just removed the differential and taken the carrier out of it. I don't think I have video of any of that. And if I do, I don't know where it's at. I can't find it. So now for the rest of the episode. Okay. Here we are. Um, I have my wheel off on that side. This axle was in there, six bolt axle, as you can see, five bolt flanges. 
Um, I've now got my other axle. It's in here, it's not tight yet. You can tell it's my old five bolt axle because, um, no, I can't turn it, but there's a huge rip in the CV. Um, I'm gonna let her, uh, you know, let her chill, let her be for now. Right now I'm just preparing to put the diff in, so I've got the diff mounts down here. Here's a transmission jack, Ugh. transmission jack to uh, pick up the diff and put it back in. Hopefully today. All right, so I just went for my first drive with the diff installed, and I have two things um, to say. First off, it's awesome, feels great. I think, honestly, it was working and functioning before, but now it's definitely working and it feels super good. But the second thing is bad. Uh, I think I know what's wrong. This rumbling and rattling sound has been going on since I got the car, or really early on. And all of the work that I've done up to this point, all of these bushings and everything, I figured would fix this sound. Uh, because it sounded like there was something loose in the suspension somewhere, something's wiggling, um, basically there was something wrong and I thought, okay, I'm going to replace all of the rubber, I'm going to make everything as solid, stiff, and, you know, yeah, solid as possible. And I did that and now here I am and it still makes tons of noise. Everywhere I drive now, it's constant now. And used to be, it used to only happen when I was under really heavy torque load, and now it's constant. And I think that's due to the fact that everything's so tight in the back end, especially the subframe and the diff mounts and everything are so solid that this rattling is constant. And I'm almost freaking positive. I'm almost positive the problem is the drive shaft, the carrier bearing and the two piece drive shaft. So I think the next thing to do is a solid drive shaft. I think if I take that carrier bearing out of the car, I will have no problems. Man, this diff feels awesome. I was just driving around a traffic circle for like half an hour. I just went around and around and around and I can feel the diff locking and it pushes you through the corner. It's awesome. Get a diff, kids. Do it now. I'm about 98% certain the uh, carrier bearing for the drive shaft is, is roasted. So what I did today, you can see this box here, is a drive shaft from FR Sport, it's the uh, uh, it's the uh, drive shaft shop steel variety. So yeah, it's not the aluminum one, but you know, for my purposes, I think it'll be just fine. And also, I don't have the money. I probably shouldn't have even bought that, but I did. Well, um, no surprise here. It didn't go well, like usual. Guess what? It's not the right length. You can see... Well, that's really loud, but okay, you can see this is lined up pretty close. About as close as I can get it. And... Oh! Oh no. Too long. Why, you might ask? I don't know. My car does not have ABS. I mean, I've shown tons of footage and pictures and stuff of my diff. I, it's not an ABS diff. I don't have ABS in my car. It's a manual transmission. This drive shaft is for a manual S14 without ABS. Apparently nothing I do the first time ever, ever works. So here I am. Stuck with a drive shaft that is the wrong size. And luckily, it's nicely scratched up and dinged from, uh, from trying to install it. The exhaust sits right in the, the tunnel, or really close to it, so it kind of scrapes going in and out. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I gotta call FR Sport tomorrow and see if they will graciously accept a return. By the way, I thought I'd show this because uh, I'm, like I, like I was saying before, I'm pretty damn certain this is messed up. Um, I don't know, it, it, it seems to spin, but you can see how wobbly it is, like it's not even close to being centered. I don't know, um, I don't know if that means when it was in the car it was any better, but I'm pretty certain this thing's, uh, this thing's toast. So yesterday, I actually installed my new drive shaft 
I don't think I've discussed this whole thing, but basically, there it is, uh, in all its glory. Put it in the car, and it works. It's driving the back wheels. Um, but today, instead of going and driving and having the car and being happy, I'm doing one more thing. Uh, I don't know how obvious this is, but that right there is, uh, oh, it's so gooey. That is grease from a CV joint that is completely, completely 100% messed up. Um, yeah, so this axle is coming out. I don't have the replacement axle here in my hand yet, but I'm gonna go and drive up to, um, where is this guy? I can't remember now. Far away from here. But I'm gonna go and get an axle, install it, and hopefully I'll be done with all of this rear end stuff and I'll be able to drive the car for a little while as I prepare for the next phase or two of the build. All right, guys, that was it. For whatever reason, that was the end. That's all I had. So, here I am, parked next to this pretty cool 85 Targa. It's seen better days. I needed to finish up this video. As you can tell, the car's driving, but all of that video was actually from a couple years ago. And so, the diff is still in the car. It's actually, um, it's leaking a little bit right now. I think the the rear cover's leaking a tiny bit. Since I've had the diff in the car, it's been nothing but good. I have done one oil change on it um, after a few thousand miles just because I wanted to, uh, to get the first sort of break in over with and then now I'm kind of on the maybe 10,000 miles or so cycle and it's been excellent. It's been one of my favorite upgrades to this car and since it went into the car, no troubles. That's what you're always looking for when you put in something and especially the amount of effort and time it took to get it in. I'm really happy with it. So stay tuned for episode number five. Thanks.